Welcome to the class on radiation safety for fluoroscopy support staff. This class is for staff involved with the fluoroscopy cases, but not necessarily operating the systems. We actually have additional education for those that operate the fluoroscopy systems that goes into detail on how to manage and operate the fluoroscopy systems in a safe manner. My objective today is to provide education on the radiation hazards associated with the use of fluoroscopy and discuss the risks and methods for reducing exposures. Let's talk for a moment about radiation and radiation uses at a medical facility. We know that patients receive higher radiation doses in certain areas like computed tomography or radiation oncology, radiation therapy, or nuclear medicine. But also in a medical facility, where do you think most of the occupational radiation dose comes from? Where do the workers receive the most radiation dose? And of course, the answer to that question is that most radiation exposure, occupational radiation exposure in a medical facility comes from fluoroscopy. And the reason for that is that during those other imaging modalities, for instance, during computed tomography or even during regular X-ray imaging or radiation therapy, you don't have individuals standing inside the room during the imaging event. But for fluoroscopy, it's an interventional procedure and you usually are standing in or around the X-ray system. Let's talk for a minute about radiation dosimetry. These are also called film badges or TLDs. And these are these objects that are usually on your person that measure the radiation dose and are exchanged at a certain frequency or read electronically to ensure that we know what type of radiation dose your body is receiving. Now radiation dosimetry is required for everyone that has a potential to exceed 10% of the annual dose limits. So not everyone is actually required to have a radiation dosimeter. However, in Washington state, if you are in the room during the operation of a fluoroscopy unit, you are still required a radiation dosimeter, even if you don't have the potential to exceed the annual dose limits. Now I'll go over those annual dose limits here in a few minutes. Now let's talk about how you need to wear those dosimeters. If you are issued both a head and a body badge, which sometimes individuals are, if they do get a lot of radiation exposure, you would wear the body badge under the lead apron and you would wear the head, head badge on the collar outside the lead apron. Make sure you have identified which badge is which. The head badge will be clearly identified. If you are issued only one badge, for instance, a body badge, it's worn on the collar outside the lead apron. Sometimes if you're pregnant or if you declared your pregnancy, you would be issued a dosimeter and you would wear that inside the lead apron. The other thing you need to remember is that you need to ensure the dosimeters are stored in a correct storage location. Sometimes people leave their dosimeters on their lead aprons and occasionally those lead aprons are left in the x-ray rooms and that can cause additional exposure on your dosimeter that you may not necessarily be receiving so it would be an incorrect exposure for you the annual radiation dose limits for individuals comes from title 10 code of federal regulations part 20 and those specify that occupational radiation workers can only receive 5,000 millirem total effective dose equivalent. The other units for this instead of millirem is millisieverts and the maximum dose listed in millisieverts is 50 millisieverts. There are other dose limits for other parts of the body. In other words, the skin can only receive 50,000 millirems and the eyes can only receive 15,000 millirems. And we look for those limits when we 
evaluate the radiation doses on the dosimeters. Now you'll also note that the patient can receive any dose that the doctor has deemed they need to receive for the procedures or for the diagnostic studies that they need. So there's no limitation on what radiation doses a patient needs to receive. If you are occupationally pregnant and declared your pregnancy, the maximum dose you can receive is 500 millirem, and we usually limit that to 50 millirem per month during the pregnancy. But we also limit the general public, in other words, individuals that are not radiation workers, we limit them to 100 millirem per year, and that's to activities that are outside of the x-ray room. I usually like to contrast these radiation dose limits to the natural background radiation exposure that each individual receives in the United States every year, which is about 360 millirem. I can tell you that most occupational radiation workers usually receive less than 360 millirem of radiation exposure working in their medical facility. So in other words, they receive less than the natural background radiation dose when they are working at their medical facility. It's important that we notify those individuals that are pregnant that they have an option to declare their pregnancy. When they declare their pregnancy, their radiation dose limit then drops from 5,000 millirem down to 500 millirem during the entire pregnancy. But of course, this is an optional declaration Individuals do not have to declare their pregnancy, but once they do declare their pregnancy, the facility has to make sure that their radiation dose does not exceed 500 millirem. That is the only requirement that the facility is required to meet. So it will not automatically change or restrict duties. Some facilities, however, have policies that will change duties for those individuals that are pregnant or that are becoming pregnant, and they may modify their duties from working in or around fluoroscopy units. But I do need to note that that is not a requirement. The only requirement is that we ensure that your, the radiation dose during pregnancy is below 500 millirem. What is the risk associated with exposure from radiation? Well, first of all, let's talk about the quantity of radiation exposure. I already mentioned to you that natural background exposure is about 360 millirem per year. And almost all individuals working in fluoroscopy rooms receive less than 300 millirem per year, just working in this environment. And this training that I'm providing you is for individuals that are in and around the fluoroscopy unit. It's not necessarily for those that are operating the system. So I would expect that most individuals that are listening to this education are individuals that are getting less than 300 millirem per year. The only individuals that get much higher doses are those that are much closer to the beam, such as interventionalists. Let me talk to you for a little bit about how we try to ensure safety with radiation. What we do is we assume that there's a little bit of risk with any amount of radiation. And the reason we assume this is we, we do know that at high radiation doses, there is an increased risk of cancer. And here's a chart that we use to show that at high doses, the blue here shows that at high doses, we've measured some increased risk, some relative risk associated with higher doses. But at the low doses, we don't know what happens. And the reason we don't know what happens is we have such low doses that are below background radiation exposures, and we have already a naturally high incidence of cancers that we don't know what happens from these low doses of radiation. But from a safety perspective, we assume that there is a linear response. We assume that there actually is an increased risk. In all likelihood, there is no increased risk, but from a safety standpoint, we assume that there is an increased risk. So what has happened over recent years is many patients have become more and more concerned about the radiation doses they've been receiving from diagnostic imaging studies. 
And so they have been choosing to potentially not have those diagnostic imaging studies. Because of that, many organizations such as the Health Physics Society or the American Association of Physicists and Medicine or the American College of Radiology have begun to research and publish statements to document that there are actually very, very low to no radiation health effects from the radiation doses that people are receiving. So this statement shows here that substantial and convincing scientific data shows evidence of health effects following high exposures. However, below levels of about 100 millisieverts or 10,000 millirem above background from all sources combined, the observed radiation effects in people are not statistically different from zero. In other words, the radiogenic health effects have not been consistently demonstrated below 100 millisievert or 10,000 millirem. What this is saying is that there are basically no health effects below 10,000 millirem. Now, because of our stance on safety and that we assume that any dose could potentially increase risk, we still try to maintain radiation doses as low as reasonably achievable. That is a very common regulatory term, ALARA, as low as reasonably achievable. So what we do is we investigate doses each quarter. We actually look at the radiation doses that individuals receive from their radiation dosimeter, and we investigate those do doses that exceed 10% of the quarterly dose limits. We also conduct surveys and studies to ensure that radiation safety standards are met. We invest in shielding devices, and we also listen to concerns of staff. Make sure you speak up if you have any concerns about safety. There are simple ways to reduce your radiation exposure. One of the first ways is the simple way of just reducing your time in and around the fluoroscopy unit. If you do not need to be in the room during fluoroscopy, then step out or be in the control room. Also, if the user of the fluoroscopy system can use pulsed fluoro mode or even not use a fluoroscopy system if it's not needed, that will reduce your time during the fluoroscopy system use. Another easy way to reduce your radiation exposure is to increase your distance from the radiation source. I've shown a diagram here where we have a fluoroscopy unit and the x-ray tube is on the bottom of the patient and the imaging surface is above the patient. And when the x-ray tube x-rays, we get radiation scatter in all directions. Now when that radiation scatter comes out, it comes out in an inverse square pattern. If you just stand a few feet back, you can see that the radiation exposure levels drop off significantly. So we would encourage you to just stand a few feet back if it's possible, as long as you can provide the patient care that's necessary. Another easy way to reduce your radiation exposure is to wear a lead apron. These lead aprons can reduce the radiation exposure to your body by 90 to 95%. Make sure you're always wearing the lead apron when you're in the room during fluoroscopy. If you are near the patient and providing care, make sure you use lead equivalent glasses and also ensure that you have a thyroid protective shield. This slide shows several different types of lead protective devices. We're showing a skirt type lead apron, which is favorable for individuals that wear lead aprons quite a bit. It does help distribute the weight a little bit better. We do have lead equivalent glasses with some side protection on those glasses and some thyroid protection. There are usually some additional lead protective devices within the room that you need to be aware of. We often have a ceiling mounted lead protective screen, which can be dropped down to reduce the amount of exposure that is coming to your face. 
Additionally, there are some table curtains and a lateral shield that can be provided. Once all of these are put in place, the amount of radiation exposure that's provided directly to the operator is reduced significantly. Also, if you are near the patient, sometimes a mobile floor shield is provided. These devices provide significant radiation reduction for those that are in the room during fluoroscopy. Where you stand during fluoroscopy makes a difference. You want to stand on the detector side of the gantry whenever possible. In this case, we have the x-ray tube down below and we have the image receptor here. Now you may think that since the x-rays are coming up this direction that this is a poor location to stand. However, most of the backscatter from the patient comes in the reverse direction. And so this is actually the best area to stand when providing fluoroscopy. This other direction where the x-ray tube is on this side of the patient and you are standing on the same side of the x-ray tube is actually of higher radiation exposure. And we do not recommend that you stand on that side of the x-ray tube if you can help it. Sometimes you need to be on that side to provide patient care. Here's a top-down view, again, of what happens when we do some radiation exposure and we get the backscatter. Here is where the x-rays are coming through and the, the patient is getting image, and this is the detector. And when the, image, when the x-rays hit the patient, we actually get some backscatter to the operator here. And so this is the actual highest exposure area, whereas the lowest exposure area is on the other side. And one of the obvious things about radiation and keeping your radiation doses low is to keep your hands out of the radiation beam. Once your hands go into the radiation beam, what happens is the system automatically detects that something additional is in the beam and it increases the radiation exposure. So not only are you increasing the radiation exposure for you on your hands, but it increases the radiation exposure to the patient. To summarize, radiation doses to patients and staff can be greatly reduced if practical optimization steps are taken. These include planning the procedure in advance, positioning equipment and the patient to reduce exposure, and using optimized settings on the equipment. For fluoroscopy users, wear personal lead and use mobile and fixed shielding. Whenever possible, stand on the detector side of the patient. Wear your radiation dosimeters and turn them into your radiation safety officer or manager whenever they're due. Remember, reducing patient radiation exposures always results in lower exposures to your staff. The other thing to remember is that if you can identify ways to improve safety, let us know. Thank you for your time. Let us know if you have any questions. If you visit us online, you will see that Corwin Health Physics provides comprehensive medical physics services for all imaging modalities throughout the Pacific Northwest. We can assist you in evaluating all of the following and more. Contact us for more information. Thank you.